to my channel. So today's episode of Wait, no, hold on. Today is another episode of An Evening In with Eve and Gin. I do actually have gin today. Oh, I put a bit too much gin in that, I think, but I have pink gin and I haven't even looked at the question yet actually for today's because I've been really busy working on something really secret and really exciting, which I'll probably make a video on soon because I can barely hold it in. It's nothing to do with YouTube, sorry. So if you're thinking it's like merch or something, it's not. But it's still exciting anyway. Um, but today I'm going to be answering your questions once more. Um, I'm so sunburned. Oh my gosh. I feel like it's not showing up that much on camera, but I got really sunburned the other day. Um, and it's just not a vibe. So I'm sorry if um, during this video you're just staring at me thinking, wow, it's a talking lobster. But anyway, it's supposed to be a chilled chatty video and you guys always hate when I start talking about my appearance. I'm not going to do that anymore. And we're going to continue. And we're going to talk about... I don't know what we're going to talk about because I've not looked at the question. Have a look. Let's have the stock. You guys sent so many. I'm going to try and scroll right down to the bottom and start from the bottom to start with and then do some from the top down. So I'm sorry if you're in the middle because, oh my god, there's hundreds. Okay, okay, let's have a look. Oh, this is a good one. First date advice. I am the worst at first dates. I don't really think I've actually been on that many. Let's have a think. Hold on. I'm gonna count because I feel like I'd probably be able to count on one hand how many first dates I've been on. Wanna say seven, six, seven. I'm gonna go, no, eight. Eight first dates, not that many. Um, I think I was differing levels of nervous for each one. Obviously none of them have gone anywhere. Some of them went slightly further than others. Um, I think for me the ones that were I was less nervous for are ones that were sort of less a date and more like I knew them beforehand at least a little bit um, but the ones I was really nervous for were the ones where it was like an actual proper date as in like it was with romantic intentions as I spoke in my last video I do like the thrill of the chase so like if there's not the romantic intention there I feel a little bit less scared I suppose because it's like oh is this a date is this not spoiler alert past Eve it wasn't a date. Well, it was a date, but it wasn't really a date. Anyway, <laughs> um, but like, yeah, so I would say, anyway, what was the question? Advice to first dates. I would say try and treat it as if you're just going to meet up with a friend. I think to start with, just because that's the best way to get to know someone is to like relax fully and just let it take its course. Don't wear something that you're going to show sweating. That's another thing that I would say. Um, and for me, the bit that I always worry the most about is like the, the bit at the end where you're like, oh, goodbye. And obviously it depends on what you want to do after that as to whether it's like, oh, you come back to mine then or you go your separate ways or whatever that is the worst bit for me i think that's the hardest part so make sure you've got a little plan in your head and like you're assessing as the date goes on what you want to do after this so that you don't get swayed by anything like nerves or anything at the end of the date and end up doing something you don't want to do um but yeah, I would say wear something comfortable and pretend that it's just a trip to the pub with your mates because that's the best way to do it how was the oxford term from home been it's been interesting honestly um in terms of the actual classes they've been relatively the same in terms of like you know you can luckily with my subject you, it does transfer the issue i've had is lack of books lack of social life oh the lights just completely gone cool lack of books lack of social life lack of motivation and just a real sense of like claustrophobia and i think that my work has i wouldn't say it's like suffered too much because i think i've been like so i've got so stressed about it suffering that i've kind of pushed it the other way um but i've not really been feeling great and i feel like i've floated through it and not really taken any of it in like i feel like i'm going to come back at finals and be like the whole of this term is just going to be a complete blur to me which i'm terrified about because obviously like this is like a really big chunk of my final like grade not this work that i'm doing this term but the stuff that we learn this term is like a big part of our final exam so yeah, no, it's not been the best. Obviously, like, I'm not enjoying. Um, I think as well, like, the fact that, like, I now have a year off after this term. Like, in four weeks, I'm done with uni for a year and I might not even be able to go abroad. And it's like, do I have to stay in my childhood bedroom for another year? Like, I don't want to do that. Um, so yeah, not not the best. I can't lie to you. But we, we do continue to move. And I'm just, I'm trying not to mourn the term. Because it would have been the best term of my degree. But it hasn't happened. So I'm trying to be like, well, you've not had it. So... You know, like, there's no point in being sad that it's not there. The next one is first celebrity crush. I love this one because I actually, like, really wanted to have a conversation with you guys about this. I never understood the whole crush thing. I think that, for me personally, I don't think that I feel attracted in that way to people until I know them really well or, like, know them well enough. Um, 
so like that's a whole other conversation that we could be having and um, which is something that i figured out quite recently um that i just don't have that instant sort of like physical attraction to somebody i can appreciate that they're attractive but i don't feel like oh my god i want to rip the guys off you know um and i think that for me like growing up i i obviously like had celebrity crushes but i think like deep down i was like what like i don't really understand this like I always was like to my mates, so if they came up to you and asked to sleep with you, would you? And they were like, yeah. And I was just like, oh my god, I just don't think I could do that, even though like I do think they're really attractive. But if we're talking about people that I found attractive growing up, I think definitely, definitely Colin Firth, like young Colin Firth. And um, but the, my first first celebrity crush that I remember having crush was Corbin Blue from High School Musical. Chad. Oh, I still think he's really attractive to be honest. Um, he was definitely my first celebrity crush. Most recent celebrity crush has got to be Paul Mescal from Normal People because, oh, wow, he's just beautiful, isn't he? He's just so nice to look at. Um, the next one is, what do you think about marriage and do you want to get married in the future? Love you. I love you too. I honestly like obviously i really do want to get married but i ha i just i physically can't picture myself getting married right i see all these people in love and like oh like so happy and getting married i'm like this is so cute and i just can't imagine myself in that situation this keeps me up at night right so many people will like what's your biggest fear and for me it's like not ever experiencing that like falling in love and getting married and like having children and just being like smitten with someone i don't think i've ever really been i've got i've been like I've really liked someone before but I've never been in love and I've never like been just like in that reciprocal loving relationship like and I just can't imagine myself walking down the aisle I can't imagine myself I can't imagine myself a being in a situation where somebody would propose to me b me saying yes because like I would just be like what the fuck like and c just actually having a wedding day and I actually ask my family this all the time like can you see me getting married and they're like yeah of course we can and I just, I properly deep it all the time. Honestly, this is the sort of stuff that keeps me up. Like, I sit there and think, can you picture yourself in a wedding dress getting married? Like, I want to, like, I really do. But I physically just don't see me personally. I can see everybody else getting married. I just can't see myself getting married. You know what I mean? Oh, no, honestly, that gets me. That gets me. Oh, no, I can't even talk about it. It stresses me out so much. Do you ever feel judged slash you can't join in conversations because you're a virgin? I do. I don't ever feel judged, but I definitely always feel like I'm just a bit out of the picture, like in the girls' group chat when everyone's talking about stuff like that. Obviously, I can understand that I can like join in in the sense that I know what's going on. I'm not 12. But I do sometimes feel a bit like, lol, <laughs> yeah, 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 god, yeah, that's so relatable. Like, oh gosh, yeah, it happens to me all the time, and obviously it hasn't. Um, but I, I try not to get too upset about it, really. Like, I don't know, it's not really anything to be upset about. Like, I know that one day, like, when I meet someone and whatever, like, then it's fine. I'll be able to join in, in those conversations. And I wouldn't want to join in those conversations having done it just for the sake of being able to join in those conversations. Do you know what I mean? So I try not to think about it too much. Um, and it does bother me. It definitely does bother me at times but less so now than it did like maybe a couple of years ago why is there so much beef between oxford student newspapers honestly i think that people think there's more beef than there actually is right obviously at oxford like it's like there are like there's two sort of main newspapers and then there's like a third sort of new publication and like that has been beefy because that you know anytime a new sort of thing like comes onto the scene like that's beefy and like that is personal beef as well between lots of people and i think that that's the thing i think that sometimes people think that the student newspapers are beefing each other but i think a lot of the time no tea no shade no pink lemonade because i am involved in it myself there is usually personal beef like behind it like some something like falling out has sort of got behind that but at times like there is journalistic malpractice and obviously they're students so with students like you're going to make mistakes you're going to do things wrong and you're supposed to learn from it but when it's like systematically being done wrong i think that's where the beef comes from in oxford like people stealing stories and what have you it's just not really cool is it and then that goes into the personal beef and it's just like a cycle um but yeah i think people think there's a lot more beef than there actually is there is a lot of beef in terms of like personal beef behind the scenes but i wouldn't say that the actual papers beef each other that much you know like the times doesn't beef the telegraph you know how many guys have you got off with in clubs okay this is an interesting one because i have a lot of people ask me like a lot of the questions were like what are your what's your opinion on getting with people in clubs and stuff like that and a lot of people also ask me whether like the fact that i sort of have a following stops me from doing that and like i thought that was a really interesting question because 
yeah like in a way like it definitely does impact it and we like the girls like we do talk about stuff like this as in if i get with someone in a club right it's not like a oh like no one's seen it like, there's a chance that somebody that watches me will see it and will share it not that that bothers me particularly but more just it goes all over oxlav and then my beef like my love life or lack thereof is like aired all over the internet um and like that has happened to me before that someone's taken a photo of me and like posted it and i'm like that's just so not on um i'm like i'll be up front and say like i've got with uh, how, wait i should know like three guys in clubs i think like no three yeah three three and a half um like and like i'm open about that like it, I, I, it's not for me i've realized it's not for me um i don't enjoy it really and it just stresses me out obviously because i just don't feel that physical attraction to somebody the first time just sort of feels a bit weird to me um no offense to any of the guys that i kissed in the club that's watching this like it's not personal to you it's just how it is in my life right okay and it just took me a while to figure it out but um yeah i don't i don't like doing it anyway because anything i do in a club in oxford like somebody puts it on oxfest or like does something like it actually frustrates me so much like i know that it's not in intention but um if you get with people in clubs go for it like honestly like no tea no shade to you but for me personally Personally, I don't think I would do it again for, for those two reasons. Oh, I like this one. Thoughts on body hair acceptance and how has quarantine changed your relationship with it? I really, I think I've spoken about this before on my channel, but like not too much. I'm re I'm a really hairy person, right? Like I have really dark hair. This colour and this thickness is all over my body, right? And I've had the worst relationship with body hair growing up. I plucked it, waxed it, shaved it. And I also pull my hair out when I'm stressed like especially around my chin area which means that i've got like darker hairs that have like grown back because i've pulled them out when i've been stressed doing my a levels and stuff without realizing and that means that now i've got like darker hairs like around places where like i didn't normally have like darker hairs and after years of sort of doing different hair removal methods as well like it has got darker and a bit coarser and i like it's one of the things that bothers me the most about me because like i can't do anything with it i have figured out now how to shave like the bottom half of my body more or less or at least get it sorted in a way that i'm not gonna have razor bumps rash burns ingrown hairs whatever but that's taken me the whole of my teenage years to sort and i am still very self-conscious about it because my hair is just really dark and it has scars as well from where i've like picked hairs and stuff like when i've been stressed which means that like it does look it doesn't look like those picture perfect models that you see but i think as i'm getting older i am accepting it more and i think that like I don't mind having body hair on me. I do prefer shaving my legs because the patriarchy has conditioned me to feel like that. But I do, I do prefer having clean shaven legs. But it's something, it's definitely a relationship that like is still quite turbulent, like me, me and my body hair. So yeah, like it's definitely better now I've gotten older, but you do compare yourself to people who've got like really light hair and don't have to do anything. And like, it's actually really frustrating. So if any of you've got dark hair, then I feel you on a spiritual level because story of my damn life someone said um any quarantine flirts this one made me laugh because yeah like i, I mean I've, I've sort of swiped through tinder and i've spoken to a few people but genuinely i know i said that i was like ready to be open to these things but i cannot be bothered at the moment i don't know if it's because of quarantine but i've just i'm just i'm not in the mood i'm just not in the mood to entertain the male species <laughs> like not in a horrible way like, because I, I did see myself, like, getting in, into a relationship this year or, like, being open to it at least. But honestly, at the moment, like, I just could not care less. I just don't think about it. I'm just busy with other things, I suppose. And, like, yes, I'm probably going to regret this when I'm, like, 26 and I'm still a frigging loner. Um, but, yeah, like, I've just not really... I tried Tinder for a bit and I was like, mm, just, I just can't be bothered. Like, it's energy, right? And unless you meet someone that you want to talk to all the time and you, like, you enjoy the conversation like properly i think i just i really struggle to get past that first phase of getting to know someone and i always compare that to like when i've spoken to people who i have got to know and then i compare it in my head to the good parts of that when we were like talking all the time whatever to the people that i'm getting to know and then i give up on them because i'm like well it's not the same as that and then you're like what well, it would have been the same if you'd have do you get me anyway so no yes no i don't like I, i'm just not in the headspace for it, i don't think which i think is totally fine but also get your act together eve what are you doing any experiences of the ick and how to get over it oh my god my luck right genuinely the reason i've been single my entire life is because of the ick right that is it that is literally it i literally either go for guys who aren't interested in me or as soon as they show interest in me i'm out the door i've spoken about this before but i don't know how to get over it if anyone's got any hints on getting over the ick do let me know because it ruins my life on a daily basis and somebody can be the nicest person ever 
and I'll still get the ick, right? There are very few people I can think of maybe like two people who I did not get the ick with, right? And obviously it hasn't worked out because I'm sat here talking about the fact that I'm still getting the ick now. But very rare. So if anyone's got any tips on that, then do leave them in the comments below. <laughs> Would you consider being friends with a viewer? Obviously, I think... Why has my phone just restarted? Anyway, before I was really interrupted by my phone. Um, I am friends with lots of my viewers. Like, actually, you guys probably don't know this, but Molly um, and Lizzie were both, like, viewers of mine before we were even friends. Like, that's how we met, is that they used to, like, tweet me and stuff a lot. And, like, I replied to their tweets and, like, we became friends. Like, that's how we're friends. And that's how I met Liv um, and Lydia as well. Lydia wasn't, like, a viewer of mine, but I met her through, like through that sort of group and I have loads of like people like viewers that I talk to on a regular basis like that I've met and like we just sort of get along really well um and a lot of people at uni watched me before they like before before com coming to uni and so I, I'm really open about I don't really care like if you're a viewer if you're not a viewer if you hate my videos love my videos like do what you like um so I don't really have a strong answer to that other than yeah sure but it's not really a factor in my when I'm thinking oh I want to be friends with this person I'm not like, oh, I don't want to be friends with them because they're a viewer. Like, it's not weird at all. Most embarrassing moment on a night out. Do you know what? I'm going to tell this story now because I think, honestly, it's such a funny story and I don't remember it at all, right? Um, but it is embarrassing. Not, like, I'll explain. Okay, like, I feel like it's in on enough, it's on enough of, like, comments on my videos that I can tell it because it is hilarious. So basically, I can't remember what it was. Was it... I think it might have been first term. It was, yeah, it was the it was the bop where, it was in Fever, I remember it was in Fever. I can't remember which night out it was. I think I know which one, night out it was. I think it was the Halloween bop, but I'm not entirely, or it might have been the Christmas one. It was one of them anyway. And I don't remember that night, right, I don't. I, I literally just, I'm sorry. I, the last thing I remember is coming into Fever, right, and talking to this girl at the bar. And she was like, I really love your videos. Like, can I get you a drink? Like, whatever. And I remember being like, oh yeah, sure, like whatever. But that is all I remember, okay? Okay? Then it gets back to me through a, like, a little bit later. I can't remember if it was the day after or like the week after. That this girl had been like, oh, um, I really want to kiss you. Right? So finally I said, I'm really sorry. Like, I, I don't really like, like, I'm not really interested in girls in that way. But I was like, you know what, if you, like, cause she said, I want to know what it's like to kiss you, right? And I was like, if you want to know what it's like, then just kiss me. It was like just a quick kiss, right? It wasn't like, you know, like a long snockathon. But apparently I was just like, yeah, go on, kiss me. And she did actually kiss me. Um, I still don't know. I can't remember who it was. And like, it just makes me laugh because that is the most drunk Eve thing to do. Be like, oh, well, you know, like life is for living. Like if you want to know what it's like to kiss me, just kiss me. Obviously like in times of Corona, you couldn't do that. But it just makes me chuckle because when I found out about that, I was like, am I even surprised that I said something like that? I feel like, I don't know. It just makes me chuckle so much. Then I always think though, if a guy said that to me, I would obviously be like, no, but maybe because I'm not interested in girls in that way, I was like oh well like if it's just a purely like you know like in Bridget Jones and like Rebecca really likes Bridget and Bridget's like oh like I'm sorry I'm just not interested in that way but thank you anyway like, do you know what I mean do you know if you've seen that I mean I really hope I'm not coming across in like a bad way here but I just mean like that's exactly what it was like and that, that I, it's not embarrassing because I kissed a girl because like kiss whoever you like it was just the situation that makes me crease um um, next question is how to deal with boys that are confusing don't that's my life hack with that I've spent way too many times being like oh my god what does this message mean what does this mean like what does this actually mean like what like what what is that just fuck them off like honestly if they're making you guess and wonder about my biggest like th regret is just not pying people off like when they've just been playing with you so much like just be done with them don't keep thinking oh but what if what if what if just be like well no if they liked you, they'd be clear about it, right? There's no playing games. I'm all games out. I'm games out. <laughs> it's like working 24-7. <laughs> do you want children and what names? I do want children, I think. I, I had like a whole time where I was like, I don't want kids. I don't, again, it's the same as with marriage. I just physically can't see myself being pregnant and like giving birth to a child. But I suppose it's because I'm 20. So like maybe like that's just not sort of in my brain sort of narrative at the moment, right? Um, I do want children. I think oh, like one or two, probably. I, I don't think more than two. Definitely not more than two. Um, but probably, probably one or two. Um, I've not got any boys' names really. 
because I've always just sort of thought if I have if I had a child it would be a girl I do need to think of some boys names but my number one girl's name is probably Maeve at the moment I think Maeve's like top of my list I don't know why I just really like that name and Molly said it in her video the other day and I was like oh my god like name twins but yeah I really like Maeve I have a whole list of baby names maybe one day I'll do a video on baby names who knows Ooh, have you ever asked someone out I have I've asked um who have I asked out so I've said I've been on eight dates right let me try and think out of those how many of those were me asking them out okay I've only asked somebody out once I think um I don't tend to do it just because I'm like I'm just convinced they're gonna say no um I suppose like for me like as I've said I'm not the best with like relationships and stuff and like dating so I just sort of let them because if they ask me out I'm like well they must be interested right whereas I'm so terrified of them being like no that I probably wouldn't but yeah I have asked somebody out before don't know if I'd do it again um, <laughs> um oh are you scared of getting a boyfriend I was before my first boyfriend I wouldn't say I'm scared I'm, I'm apprehensive just in terms of I don't really know how it works right a lot of things in my life have kind of been there done that and I know how it works right but you're always scared before you do anything like I'm scared before going to uni I'm scared before learning to drive like but then eventually it just becomes that like second nature right so I wouldn't say I'm scared I'm more intrigued as to how I will be in a relationship I don't know if I'd be that good in a relationship to be honest I think I'm just so busy I would worry that I would end up like scheduling them in um and I wouldn't want to do that to somebody so I do worry about that but I I'm not worried about being in a relationship per se. <laughs> Would you ever be friends with a Tory slash any of your Oxford friends Tories? I mean, I suppose there are definitely a lot of Tories at Oxford, right? Um, and some of my friends and ex-friends are conservative or at least conservative leaning. I'm definitely not friends with like the militant conservatives. Um, at, but I think that's like, I didn't ask them like, what are your political views before we became friends? It was more just like you attract similar people right and um, most of my friends are pretty left-wing or like pretty centrist right um but yeah no i think some people are like closet tories <laughs> difficult because it's not like uh, it's a really difficult one because like i know people who voted conservative out of frustration at labor who aren't necessarily conservatives i was pretty angry that they voted conservative because oh obviously um so i was annoyed at their decision but then at the same time it was like they're not conservatives do you know what i mean so i I don't know it's a really tricky one it's a hard line to draw because obviously like there's a line between like just not like it's bad to like not be friends with like people who have slightly different opinions to you but also like with politics it isn't just opinions is it like if you're, pri you're if you're privileged enough then it is just an opinion right and it's just a theoretical thing but for a lot of people it's life and death so yeah that's an interesting one i wouldn't necessarily rule out being friends with a tory just because they were a tory but generally usually like it's a re oh, like it's a really hard one to say it's not i like ah do you get what I mean? <laughs> um, oldest person you date. I've realised the experience that talking to younger people does not end well for me. But weirdly, I always end up being attracted to younger people. I don't know what it is, but it always ends in tears. Um, just because I think, like, as everyone says, that I'm quite, I've got quite mature for my age. And my mum always used to say to me, she was always like, guys are five years behind in terms of maturity, right? So you should technically just be thinking, like, take five years off their age in like terms of maturity. Um, so I think I've learnt my lesson that although it might be quite fun to talk to younger people I don't know like sometimes you it really shows that they are younger and you like You're just expecting them to react in a way that they're just not going to yeah because they haven't been there done that got a t-shirt, right? Um, I don't know how old like the oldest I'd date like probably like 24 25 I, I feel like I everyone always says to me that I would do better with an older person like post-grad or something and, and I can kind of see that but then I feel like I'd also be quite intimidated. I think I just kind of want someone my age like like 21 2021 20, um but obviously like beggars can't be choosers but yeah um probably older at this point because i think like every time i f fancy someone that's younger than me it's just not good for me i feel like it knocks maturity out of me to be honest so not that everyone who's younger than me is immature i just you get what i mean <gasps> would you rather never be able to do youtube again or be able to go on your year abroad Oh my god, that's such a difficult one because obviously like I really want to go on my year abroad but also I really love YouTube. I think I'd say probably not go on my year abroad because I can always travel um, after my degree um, and I could just work for this year I suppose. Obviously this is like such a hypothetical situation but I, I couldn't really give up YouTube I don't think. I don't think I'd want to give up YouTube. Um, not yet anyway. So no, I think yeah, probably not go on my year abroad. Um, what's your stance on drugs i.e. marijuana? 
I, Lydia actually answered this in her video and I think genuinely like I have no, like I, <sighs> I would never do them, right? I would never do drugs. Just pers like a personal decision. I can barely control my own brain. I just don't think I could deal with relinquishing control that much, right? And I just don't think it's for me. It's just not my scene. I've been in the presence of people that have done drugs. I have friends that do drugs. I literally have no... It's your body, your life. Do what you like. Obviously, they're not exactly good for you in terms of like... But like, neither is alcohol and I drink alcohol, right? And obviously, there's the whole debate around whether marijuana should be legalised. The fact that literally people are being incarcerated for their entire lives for things that other people are making profit off um like there's that's a whole issue to tap into but for me personally i would never do drugs but i have no real problem with people that do as long as it's not harming other people um yeah oh i love this one how to make peace with past mistakes i.e the way you reacted after a breakup first off first off 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 in the words of elsa the past is in the past right second off you are gonna make mistakes, right? And as well, when it's a really immediate situation like that, like breaking up with someone, falling out with someone, what have you, you are probably gonna act in ways you're not proud of, whether that's literally being like malicious or just doing stupid things, like being a little bit crazy, you know, like just, yeah. And I, 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 I feel this on a spiritual level. There are definitely things where I think back and I'm like, are you actually, dumb like, what was going on in your head and you think that they that other people must think that you are such an idiot for that and I, I i i really struggle to deal with the fact that i know that some people probably think that i'm like think of me based on the way that i reacted to certain things obviously humans are humans we make mistakes we do things that we're not proud of and also like you know there are other circumstances that are going on like it could be a really intense situation your mental health could not be very good like i've learned to make peace of it and that you're like that is your that is how some people perceive you right if they choose to perceive you by that one way that you reacted to that one thing, then okay, fine. But your real mates are still around, aren't they? So you're clearly not a complete nutter. Um, so yeah, I would say I try not to, A, just not to think about it because ev everyone like cringes at their past, right? But also I did see a tweet the other day and it was like, if you're cringing at your past, it means that you've advanced and improved as a person. So that's a good way to make peace with it and also accept that everybody makes mistakes like and a lot less people are thinking about it than you are if that makes sense like you think about the embarrassing thing that you did like six months ago and like nobody else is thinking about it it's just you that's thinking about it and they're all thinking about embarrassing things that they did six months ago so that's the tea oh if you had to date another youtuber who would it be and why good god um i don't watch enough youtube i don't think to like make a comment on this like i don't know if I find, are there any YouTubers that I, I don't watch any like male YouTubers really, apart from study tubers, but I don't think I'd date any of them. No offense, oh my God, that sounded horrible. I wouldn't, I wouldn't date you, like I don't mean like that. I just like, um, God, I literally can't answer that. Like I actually can't answer that. But if Paul Mescal slid into my DMs, I wouldn't say no, can't lie. Um, Oh, how do I stop getting attached to boys so easily? I catch feelings all the time and then get ghosted. Girl, I'm so sorry. Um, that is such a common thing, I think, with lots of people. We've all been there. We've all been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I've been ghosted many a time. I don't think I've caught feelings many a time, to be honest. I think for me personally, oh my god, I'm going to sound like one of those, like, cringy um, teen, like, romance dramas. But genuinely, like, I just don't let my guard down, right? I didn't let my guard down. I've laid down very few times. And every single time, it has been thrown back in my face and it just gets built up more um so i don't really tend to catch feelings anymore like do you guys ever have that feeling like you've probably had this feeling like this is my least favorite feeling in the world is when something starts to go a little bit south right and it's only then that you realize that you've caught feelings like as soon as it starts to go wrong you're like i am in too deep here and this is gonna get Mess I, I literally have had that moment a couple of times where I've been like, oh dearie me, oh dearie, dear, dear, this is going to end badly, um, because you don't realise it sneaks up on you, it really does sneak up on you. Um, for me personally now, I'm worried that I'm a bit of a robot actually. I think honestly people know me as the ice queen because I just don't really tend to catch feelings for boys anymore. Or just never really have, like, very rarely anyway. So like, if a guy, like, if a guy, if I catch feelings for a guy, it means that I like really like them. Um, but yeah, no, I literally, I'm nicknamed the Ice Queen by my mates because I just, I'm, I've learned to be quite cold and detached about it, which I think does actually, like, hinder me a lot. 
um but i think in terms of like not catching feelings i don't know how to give you an advice i feel like you're either a person that catches feelings really easily doesn't catch feelings really easily or is like me knows that they can catch feelings and so actively prevents that from happening by just not talking to guys or like ending it quite quickly so we love to see it <laughs> let's do one more question because then i've got i've got a quiz in eight minutes and i've not even made myself dinner oh this is a deep one let's end with a deep one just for the lols what hurts you honestly i had to have a proper think about this one which is why it's been a big cut in the edit because i was like what does hurt me because out of all the emotions that i feel hurt is one that i feel quite rarely right because i'm really lucky that i have amazing friends and family and whatever and i'm i really have to sit and think like when have i felt hurt and i think the only time i feel hurt is when you just feel like not good enough for anyone like like obviously this can apply in a romantic sense but just in general is when you've sort of given your all to some to someone and it's just not quite enough like they still shake you off um I, that's not really happened to me that many times i'm really lucky that that hasn't but i think that's something that really hurts me is when i'm a very thoughtful person right and like i will go out if i really care about someone romantically or otherwise i will go out of my way to show it like through gifts and just like quality time and just always being there for them or whatever like, i will put myself out there right i know everyone on this damn internet thinks that i'm really selfish and stuff but i like, ask any of my friends and like if i really care about someone i will just like lay myself on the line like my heart will be truly on my sleeve both in friendships and just sort of in talking stage whatever and i think that the only time i can really say that i've been really had my feelings hurt has been when i've done that which i don't do that often right because i mean i care for all my mates obviously but like you know where you really just are like yeah i'm here like i'm here for you and then they're like nah like do you know when someone's just like no sorry you're not quite not quite enough i think that's the only time that's really deep but like not in a don't like get your violins out for me like it, it's all right it's all right like everyone who gets hurt in life but i really had to think about that I'm, and it actually made me really grateful that i've i've got really lovely friends because like pe people like commenting hateful things on youtube doesn't really hurt me anymore because i'm like all right continue if you like but like not really relevant to my existence right but i think the only time i really get hurt is when someone you're really close to like just doesn't like doesn't make you their first choice that's it. it doesn't make you their first choice that's exactly what i was trying to say and you're like then you just overthink everything don't you so i think that that is definitely something that causes me hurt um but i think that causes everyone hurt though right but that for me is like that's the real oh so i hope you've enjoyed this video this has actually been a really long one i don't know when i'm gonna edit this it's supposed to be going up tomorrow and i've got a quiz now in like five minutes so really out time that one very well but i hope you enjoyed nonetheless um i really do want to do more of these so as always give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you'd like some more of these also comment any video suggestions you might have because i'm getting very limited as to what i can do in the four walls of my house and um yeah i'll see you very soon with a new video bye loves